In part A, we are supposed to try to show that this 2i here is a root of this equation. And since we are already given 2i, so we can just do a quick verification. Well, I'm going to do that by substituting and replacing z on the left-hand side by 2i. So let's see whether by doing that to the left-hand side, I'm going to be getting a 0, which means that 2i will satisfy the equation. That will also mean that 2i is a root of this equation. So let's try that. This z here is going to be replaced by 2i. So we have a 2i to the power of 3 plus 2 times of z, which is also going to be replaced by 2i. Then this plus 4i. So this is going to be equal to 8i to the power of 3 plus 4i plus 4i. So what is i to the power of 3? i to the power of 3 is negative i. So this will give us a negative 8i plus this is a 4i. So this is indeed equal to 0, which means that 2i satisfy this equation. Therefore, we can then say that z, which is equal to 2i now, is a root of the equation z to the power of 3 plus 2z plus 4i is equal to 0. Okay, this is the first part that we are supposed to be showing. In the second part, we are supposed to hence, okay, we are going to make use of the previous part, which is z is equal to 2i is a root. Hence, we are supposed to find the other roots. So by making use of the factor theorem since 2i is a root, then we know that 2 minus z minus 2i, z minus 2i is a factor. So that will allow me to re-express this, which is this z to the power of 3 plus 2z plus 4i. I can re-express it and I'm going to re-express it, okay? I'm going to re-express it in, term, in terms of its factor, so which is going to be z minus 2i by using factor theorem based on the fact that 2i is a root. Then multiply by a quadratic factor over here. So this is z to the power of 3. This is a linear factor. So we will be expecting a quadratic factor, which is going to be az squared plus bz plus c. Okay, to get this quadratic factor, we can try to make use of a long division. I will take this and I'll divide it by z minus 2i. So that's one way. Or we can just simply try an observation first because from my observation, I can see that a is actually equal to 1. Why? Because on the left-hand side, the coefficient of z to the power of 3 is 1. And on the right-hand side, the only way for us to be getting z to the power of 3 is to take this multiply by z squared. And that is why a has to be equal to 1 so that I can have a coefficient of 1 for z to the power of 3. In fact, I can do this to try to get c. The term that is independent of z on the left-hand side is 4i. So this multiplied by c should give us a 4i, which means that c is going to be equal to minus 2. Minus 2i multiplied by minus 2 is going to give us a positive 4i, which is here. I'm going to try to solve for b, and I think I have to try to compare coefficient again to try to solve for b, and I don't think it is as easy as what we have just done. So let me just write down a few more steps here. By looking at the coefficient of, um, let's say, z. Okay, on the left-hand side, the coefficient of z is equal to 2. And I'm going to match this to the coefficient of z on the right-hand side. And that can be obtained by taking z multiplied by minus 2. So the coefficient will be minus 2. And this multiplied by this, which is minus 2i of b. So which means that minus 2i of b, this is equal to 4. B is going to be equal to minus 2 over i. And I'm going to try to rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which is minus i. So I'll multiply this, and this will give us the value for b. B is going to be equal to 2 i. So b is equal to 2 i, which means that for this equation over here, okay, let me just rewrite it, z to the power of 3, plus 2z plus 4i is equal to 0. Now it can be re-expressed into its factorized form, which is z minus 2i multiplied by z squared plus b. Okay, b, we have already found out it is 2i. So b is 2i, then z minus 2, and this is equal to 0. So if this times this is equal to 0, this tells me that z minus 2i must be equal to 0, or z square plus 2i z minus 2 this must be equal to 0. So z here this is equal to 2i. In fact this is not what we are looking for because, because we are looking for the other roots. So the other roots should be obtained from here. So based on this I'm going to apply the quadratic formula. z is going to be equal to minus b so minus 2i 
plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac. So we have a b square minus 4ac. c is minus 2 divided by 2a. So this is going to get us a minus 2i plus or minus square root of. Here we are going to be getting a um, 2 square is going to be 4. 4 multiplied by i square is going to be minus 4. This is going to be positive 8. So here is going to be equal to 4 divided by 2. So square root of 4 is 2. This is going to get me a minus 1i plus or minus 1. So we have the other two roots. Let me write them down here. The other roots, they will be these two. So it will be minus 1 minus i. And let me write this properly. This is minus 1 minus i. And the other one is going to be plus 1 minus i. The first thing that we want to do in B is to try to convert W1 and W2 into their Euler form. So let's find the modulus of W1. Modulus of W1 is equal to the square root of the square root of minus square root of 6 over 2 square plus square root of 2 over 2 square. And this is equal to this is equal to square root of Two. We want to next find the argument of this. So let's try to do a quick sketch of W1 to represent it on an argon diagram. And that will be something like this. Okay, where this is minus square root of 6 over 2. And here we have a square root of 2 over 2. So the argument of W1 is going to be this over here. So based on what we can see, argument of W1, not WI, argument of W1, this is going to be equal to pi minus away the basic angle or the reference angle, which is going to be obtained by doing a tangent inverse of opposite, which is square root of 2 over 2 divided by the adjacent. So square root of 6 over 2. And because we are looking at the basic angle, all the dimensions here that we are going to be using will be positive. So we have a pi minus away tangent inverse of 1 over square root of 3. Tangent inverse 1 over square root of 3 is pi over 6. So this we are going to be getting a 5 pi over 6. So now we have obtained the Euler form for W1. This is going to be equal to square root of 2 e to the power of i 5 pi over 6. Let's try to do the same for w2. Let's try to find the modulus of w2. And this is going to be square root of 1 square plus 1 square. So it is also the same square root of 2. And I'm going to do a quick sketch on the argon diagram to represent the complex number that is on it. So it is going to be 1, 1. So this is going to be the argument that we are looking at. The argument of W2, this is going to be, this is easy, tangent inverse of 1 over 1. So this is equal to pi over 4. So W2 here, this is equal to square root of 2, e to the power of i, pi over 4. Okay, we have W1, we have W2. Let's try to find out what is W2 over W1, the whole thing to the power of n, which is actually this portion over here. So this is equal to square root of 2, e to the power of i, pi over 4 divided by square root of 2, <laughs> e square root of 2, e to the power of i, 5 pi over 6. So this is going to be powered to n. So square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is 1. We have a e to the power of i, pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6. Pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6 will be giving us a minus 7 pi over 12. So we have this to the power of n, then applying simple indices. This is going to be e to the power of minus i, 7n pi over 12. So based on this, we can see what is the argument of this. The argument of this is minus 7n pi over 12. And this is equal to minus pi over 2. So we are going to try to equate the argument of this to minus pi over 2. Let me write down this statement first. So we are going to be quoting the argument of w2 over w1 to the power of n to be equal to minus pi over 2. So we know what is the argument of this. We have just found it. It is minus 7n pi over 12. So this is supposed to be equal to pi over 2. But let's not forget about the, uh, the periodic nature of angles. So it can repeat. 
right? So every time when it goes past plus or minus two pi, it is going to be the same. So we need to plus a two k pi multiples of two pi. Okay, integer multiples of two pi. So it can be plus or minus multiples of two pi. So this k here are going to be integers. So I'm going to write down this. So it can be positive integers or negative integers. So now if I were to make n the subject, n here is going to be equal to 6 minus 24k, where k is an integer, divided by 7. So I'm going to try next is, uh, what I'm going to try next is to substitute different values of k into this expression here. Uh, and we want to try to find which of the, which of the values of k will be able to give us integer values for n. And we are going to sieve out the smallest positive integer for n, the smallest integer for n. Okay, the smallest integer value for n in this case is going to be, um, okay, let's try to substitute different values of k in, okay? So to substitute different values of k in, we are going to, um, we're actually going to make use of the calculator, okay? I know the question says that uh, we cannot use the calculator, but I'm still going to use the calculator to help me to do a quick substitution, although I'm not going to, I'm not going to display the calculator part into the, into, into my solution. So let me just very quickly show you what I have, how I've done, what I've done to substitute numbers into K by using the calculator. Okay, so this was what I've done in the calculator. I have pressed this 6 minus 24k over 7 into the y1 of the calculator, replacing k here by x. And then I'll make use of the table in my calculator. So I realized that, okay, when k is equal to 0, okay, then n, y1 represents this, which is n, n is equal to 6 over 7. So when k is equal to minus 1, n is equal to 30 over 7. So if I were to just write down a few of these values here, okay, so the first value that I'm going to be getting is this 6 over 7. Then I'm going to be getting a 30 over 7. Then we will be getting a 54 over 7. If I were to just continue, I will be getting next a 78 over 7. Then after that, uh, it will be a 102 over 7. And finally, we are getting to our integer value, which is 18. And then following that, I will still have other values. But since the question one, the smallest integer value. So I know that 18 is the smallest possible integer value because uh, the next one is going to be definitely bigger than 18. Look at the trend that the numbers go. So therefore, we can then say that the smallest integer for n, smallest integer for n is equal to 18. Mm -hmm.